what's up guys this is kd cloudy and i recently installed windows 10 on my macbook pro uh, using apple's bootcamp software which will uh, let you partition your uh, max ssd into two separate volumes partitions to so so that i can dual boot mac os and windows so i did that why you might ask why would anyone uh, why did i install uh, windows 10 on my macbook well to play valorant valorant is becoming this new hot game to play right now um, a lot of a bunch of my friends are playing it so out of peer pressure and just out of total boredom in this quarantine i just i just downloaded uh, the windows 10 iso and installed it on my macbook and also played valorant for like five minutes and then uninstalled because it was taking so much of my disk space so yeah don't expect any gaming benchmarks in this one uh, I, I i keep reiterating i'm not a gamer at all this is like a very simple clean video just to clear your doubts and a basic guide basically for uh, anyone who wishes to install windows on their mac in 2020 on any of the recent macbooks uh, so yeah let's just get into it the installation process is actually pretty simple you first need to uh, download the windows 10 iso from microsoft's website and then fire up the bootcamp assistant which is pre-installed on your mac uh, just browse the iso file allocate some disk space and it's going to restart and after that is just the traditional windows 10 uh, setup process now about product activation you can still use windows unactivated just by you know skipping that uh, activation checkbox or if you are like me if you have already have a windows 10 copy uh, activate it on some of your other laptop or an old PC. You can reactivate that going into the settings, uh, checking and you know transferring that license key and reactivating Windows to your uh, current machine. So that's what I did. I had a Windows 10 Pro license on my old PC, which I don't use anymore. So it, it, was, it just made sense to transfer uh, that license and reactivate Windows on when I was installing it on my MacBook Pro. Now, how if you're wondering how i got my genuine license it's a it's a fun story uh i actually bought the windows 8 pro uh physical disk the genuine physical disk from microsoft back in 2012. i was running vista back then and microsoft had this upgrade offer when windows 10 first launched there was there was this whole marketing campaign so if you're if you were a windows 7 user you could just upgrade to windows 8 for 7.99 or 6.99 rupees which is pretty darn cheap and if you want actually a physical disk shipped to your home it would cost you about like 1800 to 2000 rupees because of this one time purchase i was grandfathered for uh, updates to windows 8.1 windows 10 and all subsequent windows updates so yeah you could say this was one hell of a purchase probably my best tech purchase of all time but yeah this is not a video about windows 8 pro this is a video about windows 10 on a mac so let's talk about that now, firstly, when, you're in, uh, when you boot up into the operating system itself, you're greeted with that classic Windows uh, UI. And honestly, it was kind of refreshing to use Windows after all this time. That too on such a competent hardware, such a good piece of hardware. But yeah, there, was some, there, are, there were a few things I was curious about, about running Windows 10 on a Mac. First, first was how, how does the touch bar work? Well, the touch bar is now like a digital function row with uh, you know just the buttons uh, for adjusting brightness no sliders no app specific buttons or any controls like that just uh, the plain old digital buttons and uh, if you press the function key the function row pops up so yeah there's that secondly how does the force touch trackpad work on windows since you know macbook trackpads are like so a solid piece of glass with a vibration motor underneath which actually simulates the click well that works about as what you would expect it, it works just fine you it's just that you will lose that extra bit of functionality that customizability of choosing your uh, intensity of that vibration and you also lose out on that uh, force click functionality i mean uh, that's to be expected since windows is not designed for force click applications what annoyed me the most was the lack of windows precision drivers installed by default using the bootcamp assistant which means that you lose functionalities for gestures like three, three fingers or two finger swipes you lose uh, natural scrolling so you need to just awkwardly scroll uh, in the standard direction 
and i really don't know why the boot camp assistant does not install it like by default since gestures are like a big part of the mac and something which we take for granted and the lack of windows precision drivers kind of ruins the experience uh, you have to make do by installing uh, a ported version of the windows precision drivers for the mac and i will leave the link down below but installing them manually is kind of tricky so i would recommend you to install a package manager called chocolatey it's kind of the windows equivalent for homebrew if you know what i mean and just enter a powershell command and it auto magically just install all the drivers and you have all of the swipes that gestures all of those uh, things back on your trackpad so that's pretty nice i still think it should have been uh, included by default but it's fine now let's move on to the experience itself now i personally like using windows i'm not one of those pricks who just hates windows or says windows is difficult to use just because i use a mac uh nothing like that i actually found it very refreshing to use windows on such a powerful piece of hardware i mean the quad core cpu uh the ssd this is the first time i'm using windows on an ssd and a lot has changed and improved since i last used windows microsoft edge has gotten a lot better it's now a google chrome clone basically but i mean it's pretty good and that's my default browser for now fluent design is much more prevalent and much more polished right now and i really like the current design language for microsoft products and windows in general uh, the translucency and the colors and everything it just pops and it's pretty good now let's not turn this video into a windows 10 rant or a windows 10 review it's like too late for that uh, but yeah coming back to the main point is it worth installing windows 10 on your mac and i say worth because when you think about installing an operating system on your computer it's it's associated with a lot of hassle a lot of time a lot of research but i can assure you if you know like a little bit of how how to use a computer i mean it's just so easy boot camp assistant utility makes it so easy and so smooth to install windows 10 on your mac and i mean you might have this like niche piece of software which fits into your workflow which is only available on uh, windows or you just want to play an occasional game or two the occasional um valorant or anything cs go uh you can install windows for that and that's what most people do it you can do that too and rest assured it's just very easy to install windows and on your mac now the main concern is disk space ideally you should have like a 512 gig ssd if you want to install all the full fledged apps or a couple of games uh and it allocate at least like 120 gigs to windows but for people like me uh, who just have 256 gigabyte ssd on the laptop uh i just allocated 40 gigs and the amount of storage you end up getting is under 15 gigabytes so and that becomes really difficult for installing any kind of game or anything like that so i just have like spotify and discord and a couple of other lightweight apps now if you're wondering about installing windows 10 externally through your external ssd or your external hard drive well boot camp you assistant does not let you do so and there are workarounds to that but i will not recommend uh, if you have a recent macbook with the t2 chip it it has some boot encryption issues and you are prone to breaking your mac so that's very very risky and i will not recommend you doing that so if you have like 128 gigabytes in your ssd and you just cannot partition extra disk space what i will recommend you to do is uh, install this application called parallels desktop it's like this very lightweight uh, virtual machine software and i use it for uh, linux emulation on my mac os environment and uh, yeah you can use that you can give it a try it's not free you can look at some other alternatives i'll link them below uh, those will work great as well and i mean virtual machines are fine as long as you're not uh, as long as you're not going to game on it and if you if you're planning to game i mean obviously dual boot is the option but yeah you know what i'm rambling uh, that's basically it thank you so much for watching hopefully this video helped you out uh, and if you're not subscribed already get subscribed like this video and i'll catch you guys in the next one also if you have any doubts feel free to comment down below i would be happy to answer them and yeah i'll catch you guys in the next one cheers